mama. Kudos to you for saying that, for spilling. Hey y'all, it's me, the Spexy Bustlin' Car, and welcome back to Hot or Rat. And yes, this week's video is a little bit late because I have the honor and privilege of being a bridesman in one of my best friend's weddings. But in today's video, we'll be doing a quick highlight and recap of UK vs. The World 2 Episode 7, the wedding roast of Michelle Visage and Graham Norton in Bridal Runway, and finishing with the full hot errant of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 16, Episode 12, where our queens were split into pairs and challenged to create gender-inclusive restrooms for a new reality TV show called Bathroom Hunties, a new reality TV show competition loosely parodying shows like Love It or List It from HGTV. The runway category was Chain Reaction. First up, the wedding roast from UK vs. The World 2. So because she won last week's episode, Hannah has the privilege of determining the order of this roast, where she decides she'll go first and Tia Coffee will close. Decisions which were ultimately in the best interest of everyone this episode, because the three middle queens completely flopped in this challenge. The Grand Dame says the concept of an idea doesn't quite translate from French to English because they don't have roasts in their culture, and fails to get any real laughs out of what she's saying. Scarlet Envy has good material, but fails to get any jokes. Her delivery was very off. And Marina, while she is the best of these middle three queens, is very hit and miss, with most of what she's saying falling completely flat, but she does manage to get a couple of laughs when she does things like her signature head turn. And while I think there has overall been a bit of judge favoritism towards queens like Tia Coffee and Hannah Conda, their accolades were well-deserved in this challenge, and they were really the only two who I would consider successful in this admittedly very difficult roast stand-up challenge. The bridal runway, though, was absolutely incredible and perfectly in parallel with my personal life, which we love to see. But I've got to call out La Grande Dame specifically for a hottest hot here because this alien bride ruffled insanity is one of the most beautiful looks I think we've ever seen on the Drag Race runway. And the way she played with that beige color, revealing to the multicolor arm pieces in gorgeously detailed headpiece, phenomenal. Her runways this season have just been absolutely untouchable, and this is so incredibly hot. And as for placements this episode, Hannah and Tia get to lip sync for the win, with everyone else being in the bottom. And Tia's doing this sort of homage throughout the lip sync to the eliminated queens of this season, where she pulls out an item seemingly representing each queen in the order that they sashayed away, which was a nice sentiment, but kind of left me sitting there wondering why she was doing that, because in the context of a lip sync for the win, it just didn't didn't really make sense to me on top of the fact that I'm sure the judges had no idea what or why she was pulling those things out of her pocket. The only reason we knew was because she told us in a confessional. And Tia does okay, but I think Hannah definitely deserves the win here. Someone had to win. But the second she's announced as the winner, we know how this is going to go, considering at the beginning of this episode, she revealed she would have sent Scarlett home last week when she was lip syncing for the top spot, which was actually a pretty crazy moment because she kind of tells Scarlett to her face that she likes everyone else in the room more than her. So. Yeah, it's no surprise when she pulls out Scarlett's name and sends her home. And while it did hurt to see Scarlett go home, considering how she truly has won me over this season and displayed such a range in her talent and so much growth, I'm not sure sending home anyone else would have made a ton of sense. LeGrand Dom has a really great track record and has never been in the bottom, and Marina Summers has three wins. I will also point out though, I think Hannah's sort of vendetta, we'll call it against Scarlett, considering she pulled her lipstick now to weeks in a row is not only a personal but also competitive choice because Scarlett I think is possibly the only queen who could really give any of the other ones that are left in the competition a run for their money and a lip sync for the crown. Because let's be honest, based on track record and what we've seen from Marina's amazing star powered performance capabilities, she's gonna take the crown and a lip sync for the crown. Mom. But with the finale coming in just a couple of days, make sure to let me know who you're rooting for down in the comments below. Are you Team Marina, Team Hannah, Team Tia Coffee, or Team Le Grand Dame? And next up, we'll move into the hotter rod of season 16, starting with Q and Morphine, who in the Bathroom Hunties Design Challenge originally decide on this concept of decorating for heaven and hell. But we only ultimately see them execute on the hell part of this original idea, which is ultimately a good if Yes, an original choice, because I think decorating for both concepts would have been a little too difficult. I really loved the 
flames all over the walls in their bathrooms. And in the tour portion of this challenge, when Michelle and Carson come through to experience their bathroom, we see some fun interactive experience like live hand hooks, which you can't actually hang your things on, a shattered mirror, a tickling the pit crew activity, and of course a bathroom featuring a toilet seat with golden spikes and toilet paper hung just out of reach. And considering their chosen theme of hell, I thought they did a great job coming up with experiences that demonstrated this fun yet torturous experience. Where these two definitely need some work though were the characters they chose. We see Q basically doing the same over exaggerated and almost now forced feeling character she's done in every acting challenge which we first saw her do with the brick in the SNL thing. And while Q does a good job leading Carson and Michelle through the bathroom, she does as they later critique ultimately steamroll Morphine's performance. Morphine is very much playing the sidekick role here and fails to stand out in a way that's significant. And while I wasn't laughing out loud or IJ bowling, this... <laughs> was, I would say, a successful interpretation of this challenge. And I would give it a safe hop. As for their chain theme runways, Morphine comes out in an all gold look, absolutely covered and dripping with chain. She went all the way with this theme. And is, I feel, very much leaning into that pop star on a big stage energy here, with a nod to those dripping crystal headpiece wigs that people like Rihanna or Cher have worn in the past. I think the bodice of what she's wearing is absolutely gorgeous. I love how the rivets on the corset part contrast the chain and layering of the chest and shoulder pieces. The boots of this are also absolutely great. I love how stiff and structured they are in the foot and calf area, but move so much around the thigh and knee area, which as we see later, really work out well for her on the lip sync. And she says this look is a reference to Javaro, this mythical character who lures men into her watery depths and, you know, ultimately sees them to their end, stealing their treasures. Which by the way, if you haven't seen the series Love, Death, and Robots on Netflix, there is an episode about this character that I highly recommend and that I love seeing morphine reference. The only reason I didn't give this five hot flames was I just did not love the gold panty underneath all those structured armor pieces. Something about that just felt a little diapery, but this was definitely a hot look overall. Hugh's look though wasn't my favorite this week. I did like the red and black color scheme and the craftsmanship detail of how she has these giant red chain pieces coming in and out of the arms and leg pants of this look. And the pants themselves actually are incredible. I just don't love how much the top is matching the bottom. And as Michelle kind of points out in critiques, kind of blends together when she's standing there. Plus the wig in particular was really rough for me. I did not understand the choice of having this like beautifully sculpted swirl in the middle part and what looks like electrified frizz coming out of the sides. It was just a mix of two different wig styles that I think ultimately did not mesh here. I think there's a lot of good in this look. It's just that the garment as presented didn't really feel like we reached a clear thought out concept or finish line in terms of presentation. So I'd leave this with a warming up. And our next duo are Nithi and Dawn who come up with the concept of decorating their bathroom like an art gallery and decide to name it for art, which is honestly a really strong concept and name for a challenge like this. It was so good. But the execution of the final experience is just lacking on so many fronts. I really hated that poopy green diarrhea color that they used to create the swiggles on the wall. And this concept of being an exhibit actively worked against them because as we see in the other two bathroom experiences, having fun interactive moments are what make them successful. With Nimi and Dawn's bathroom though, it's a lot of, hey, Michelle and Carson, look at this bust statue you sink. Look at this mirrored shower. Look at these wee toilets, which were all decent ideas, but were missing on the interactivity element. Nithi and Don also had the issue of Don completely fading into the background. When the two were walking Michelle and Carson through their bathroom and also giving the confessional moments directly to camera, it is almost exclusively Nymphia talking. And a lot of Don going, mm-hmm, okay, yeah, or just kind of reiterating what Nymphia was saying. And what Nymphia was saying really wasn't that funny. She was just kind of talking in certain circles a lot. Their chemistry was just a bit constipated. So I'm gonna give their execution of this bathroom a and as for their runways, Dawn comes out in all black velvet dungeon Dawn, draped in rouge dress with some strategically placed cutouts to show off her hips. And I think the silhouette and shape of this dress is good, although I don't think super original to the catalog of Dawn's runways. We've now seen a couple different instances of stuff that feels similar to this, like the punk look from last week and the fluid dynamics supported design dress. Plus I feel the chains in this look are more of a decorative afterthought than an actual 
actual intentional exemplification of some bigger concept. So I'm gonna give this look a rot. Nanthea though looks absolutely gorgeous. Here she's integrating some traditional Chinese tassel knots under the ends of these really delicately crafted and shaped chains that kind of have these swirls or butterfly almost shapes throughout the look. I think the corset and bodice are also made of such a gorgeous fabric, kind of reminding me of those like blue and white Wedgwood eggs. And I love how the color palette she's chosen for this look is so not obvious for a chains type of runway. Everyone else kind of went for these darker themes and Anthea said, no, I'm gonna do something light and beautiful and delicate, but still maintain the hardness and seriousness of the hardware throughout the look. She gives us a little bit of both worlds. This look is hot. And finally, we've got Plain Jane and Sphere Crystal, who in the concepts go with the bathroom decoration theme of a classic speakeasy, calling their speakeasy the Booty Lickers speakeasy. And from a zoomed out perspective, I think they did a great job with the 20s styling and nod to the Prohibition era. Doing things like asking Michelle and Carson for a password when they walk in and revealing at every turn some hidden adult beverage bottles. Plus in a larger sense, they did such a great job at making every aspect of their speakeasy interactive with welcoming beverages and a powdering mirror. Plus two different performances, one in which they're dancing for the pit crew member playing the piano and another where Safira literally sings opera, literally sings opera, okay? And we knew that she had that talent, but she absolutely killed that. And playing <laughs> does a really amazing triangle performance off to the side. They were genuinely entertaining and hilarious at every opportunity, even when they went to the bathroom stalls to show off the viewport, which, you know, you can use to see the other person across from the other stall, among other things. As a duo, these two were absolutely the most well-coordinated and had the best chemistry. I also loved the frenemies bit they were doing where Plain would call Sephira random names like Shakira or Sequoia, and Sephira would do these really over-exaggerated faces in response. I was legitimately IJ bowling at them. <laughs> I cannot say that seriously. And they absolutely deserve a <laughs> for what they did in this challenge. And over on the runway, we've got Plain Jane serving us a little bit of sexy alien cyborg, which definitely feels like a Plain Jane nod to the iconic Terry Mugler bionic woman. And it is overall very that meets Barbarella and C-3PO sci-fi Star Wars fantasy. I think the details of all the armor pieces, straps, and chains play beautifully together. And I love how interconnected everything feels and complete this look is overall. She looks absolutely snatched to hell and back. Like this has to be one of her absolute best looks on the runway. And I love the detail of that light green color on the hemlines of some of the pieces matching the light green in that wig. It's gorgeous. I really did not agree with Michelle critiquing her for this look, giving a similar effect to what she served on the runway before. Because in fact, I think she has shown quite a bit of versatility now. And I think this look adds even more versatility. I think what Michelle maybe was picking up on were these similar design concepts of a really tight structured waist and large assets being exemplified through her fashions. The only reason I didn't give this look five flames here, because I do think it's gorgeous, is the idea of chains here or chain of reaction doesn't feel fully realized. It is just like, oh, here's a pretty bionic woman, but with chains. So I'm gonna give this look a four flame. <laughs> Safira, on the other hand, absolutely eight all the way down on this runway. Girl, she is serving us some base king Lee Bowery club kit fashions in this pup bark bark bitch realness look. This is really crazy. It's so crazy and so fun and so drag, yet also so fashionable and just well done. The half black and half white skin tight latex is absolutely gorgeous. And I love how she connected the different pieces of the look with the gold chains and used the gold chain as a collar for the dog around her neck. And yes, she has given us camp. She has given us club kit and she's also giving us some elegance and fashion with the cape coming down behind her. And most importantly of all, has truly executed on a concept larger than just putting chains on a random look. And y'all know I'm more of a cat person, but this dog look is definitely hot. The one this week goes to both Safira and Plain, which is a decision I very much agree with. I think they worked so well as a duo. And their amazing chemistry of allowing each other to shine in their different moments is what made them successful. Because teamwork, what? Makes the dream work. <laughs> so Safira now has four wins in his competition so far. 
and three of them are from the past three episodes which is such a strong finish coming into these final few episodes and plain now has three our bottom two though end up being morphine and dawn which is a decision i can understand although not one i can totally support based on how the judges said they were going to judge this episode which was in teams like if they're going to give a win to two queens for a team challenge why are they not putting a team of two queens in the bottom two for that same challenge i think significant dawn here would have made a lot more sense considering they collectively did the worst in this challenge but i don't think it was a coincidence they singled out morphine and dawn considering neither of these queens have secured a win in this competition yet i think they were trying to give these two a clear message that they needed to show up or show themselves out and i did react to this lip sync in an exclusive video which you can view over on my patreon at patreon.com slash queen click the link in the description of this video to join today and help support the channel but my thoughts on this lip sync are that we witnessed an absolute murder and all Although I think Nivia and Dawn would have been a better bottom two considering the context of this episode, I'm really glad that we got to see Morphe lip sync to body by Megan Thee Stallion. Because girl, she absolutely bodied that body. Your honor, the body was bodied. And like how perfect of a lip sync was this for someone like Morphine who has made herself famous for having a BBL. Her eye contact with the judges and knowing every single lyric of that very wordy rap was so impressive. And the way she danced was absolutely perfect for the song. This was just not a lip sync made for a performer like Dawn, who's kind of trying to approach this from a kooky, spooky, campy perspective, crawling around on the stage and stuff. But I do want to highlight that it seems she also knew all the lyrics. So that is something worth acknowledging. Dawn did her best, but Morphine rightly Shantae's, which is such a gag because Morphine's now the second queen of this cast to survive three lip syncs. And if there is not a lip sync assassin tour being planned for this season featuring Morphine and Maya, then someone is not doing their job. And finally, we'll end with Hottest Haunts, who if I had to pick one person from the challenge, I would choose Safira Crystal. And on the runway, I also choose Safira Crystal. I also asked my patrons to vote on their Hottest Haunts on the runway this week, and they've chosen Safira Crystal. As always, I want to say thanks so much to you for watching today's video and give an extra special thanks to all of my patrons who truly make my channel possible by contributing to the financial success of my channel every single month at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. And I'm gonna give an extra special shout out to Ashley Brungart, Child Free Mateau, Dorothy Hall, Felicia Flora, Matthew Burns, Stephen Topher, and Will and Tana, who are all supporting me at my Bussy Queen collector tier at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. See you later. Love ya. Bye. Yaddy, 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 yaddy,